Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here, playing some more Pillars of Eternity. We're here in the Estern Wood on the way to Lord Raedric's castle, and the ultimate goal is to take down the Lord, because he is a bad man who is uh, hanging people in trees for giving birth to hollow-born babies, which really isn't their fault, but he doesn't care. So, in this map, we uh, start out in the bottom left corner, it seems, and I'll do my usual thing of not very efficiently exploring all the dark space. Can't remember if there's any, like, really interesting set-piece sort of battles here. This is, I believe, a map that you can pretty comfortably just sort of walk through and get to the exit on the east side and keep going to Lord Raedric's estate, if you wish. I, I, mean, I could be wrong, but I just don't think there's... Oh, that's pretty cool. Good job, Durance. Way to go. Did you get a crit? Yeah, sweet dogs. All right, uh, so the Wicks are coming at me. Wicks, whatever they are. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop Holy Radiance to give everybody an accuracy boost and do some damage to these bitches. I think we're gonna also drop a Dazing Bomb in here. I guess the Barbarian might as well turn on Fury, although I'm not 100% sure uh, that that will actually be worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock out, knock down this one here with uh, my fighter just in case that one's trying to run to my back line. Uh, it was, in fact, doing that thing. Luckily, these guys are just very simple. I'm no longer getting any experience. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner, there's no green lines indicating I'm getting any kind of experience for these. So yeah, this is, this is one of those examples of a fight that's sort of pointless. Like, I mean, if you miss it, is what I'm trying to say, you don't really lose out on anything. Except for, you know, the occasional crafting ingredient. Oh, glad I came around this way. Look at that Orlands Cradle. Wow, that's already, like, almost half the map done. Hey, sweet. One little tip I recommend, and this is, like, a super minor deal, but if you're ever exploring a map and you get to one edge and you are about to keep going uh, back to try to explore another edge, always try to hit the... Oh, I don't know why I'm not getting the option here, but always try to hit the uh, end of the map button to explore the next map because like oh well this is really not turning out as a very good illustration of the point I'm trying to make here where are uh there's no button over here okay I guess this map you got to get up there there's the button over here okay so yeah, you always click on this to get access to the next area and then you can go back and keep exploring but yeah, notice I walked through like the whole map and like nothing happened there's those wicks and that that was it so not, not the most exciting of maps, but, you know, I'm okay with that. N not every map needs to be, like, super exciting. In fact, it's a little bit unrealistic if, like, every single map has some crazy stuff going on. Because, let's face it, life isn't that exciting. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and knock down this spider with my fighter. We'll turn on Frenzy and start whacking the other spider with the Barbarian. Um, here, I'm gonna have my priest come forward and let's go ahead and put the days on these spiders. That way the rogues gonna do some sneak attack damage and I might as well drop a bomb here even though it's redundant with the daze. Sometimes these dazing effects don't always hit or they hit but they don't apply the dazed or if it's a graze the daze doesn't last as long so doubling up on crowd control is not the worst thing in the world. Obviously for a long fight you want to change your crowd control effects like in League of Legends or something but in this particular game or in this particular fight excuse me where it's so simple uh, and the wizard wasn't gonna have time to drop both his daze bombs anyhow it's fine to overlap. Plus, remember, the wizard does damage, too, so that has some value. You got a stag and a deer here. I love these 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 large animals that just hang out in these, like, treacherous areas filled with roaming packs of wolves and undead and primordial beings from beyond human comprehension. They're like, oh, yeah, we're just hanging out here, you know, munching on some grass. Hey, guys. Just a stag and a deer hanging out like we do. Okay, oh wow, dead adventure with nothing super fancy. This stuff, you, you, you can eat the food. Food in this game, I haven't actually talked about it. it it's actually pretty good. I, I do like the implementation of food. Um, because basically what food does in this game is it gives you a decent bonus for a pretty significant amount of time. So let's actually go to this thing and take a look at it. Uh, there it is. So, like, this gold rot chew that we found. For 600 seconds, that's 10 minutes. So it gives you a bonus to damage and movement speed for 10 minutes, which is a lot. 
So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you are going to be playing on the highest difficulty, you probably owe it to yourself to actually eat the food. And by the way, it's not just, you know, that you find food. You can also make food. So with, like, you know, wheat and grain and vegetables and milk and other stuff that you find in the game. So you, you can, like, learn recipes. You start off learning some by default. And you can make food. Ten minutes is a long time. That's probably, like, half of the map. And it's certainly going to last long enough to clear out any, like, particular area of interest that you might have. Like, if there's, like, a certain sequence of battles or a boss battle, you know, why not give everybody the bonus to might or whatever? Again, I, it's not a critique of the game that I am not using food. I just really, really hate dealing with consumables in these sorts of games. I feel like everyone does, though. Isn't it kind of like a universal thing where you always save your healing potions until, like, a really important battle, and then all of a sudden the game's over and you never used your potions? So it's, it's kind of a thing that I just don't want to deal with. And what I like about Pillars of Eternity is you don't have to. And like the original Baldur's Gate, you could just ignore potions, but it would make the game significantly more annoying. Like if you never drank healing potions, it would just be much more annoying. Uh, you'd have to rest a lot more often to heal. Uh, and then some of the some some of the set piece fights are like genuinely really really difficult. Oh, hang on a second. There's quite a few skeletons here. Let's go ahead and um, I want to actually include that guy over there. And I'm actually going to have... Are these guys immune to being blind? They're not. So I'm going to have the rogue just take out that archer person. Okay. Okay, that was a little bit overkill. Yeah, these skeletons, not that hard. By the way, uh, the, the chanter's in invocation to summon three skeletons. I, I don't know how, how good it is. Because these skeletons go down pretty damn easy. quite recent. Someone's been busy. Someone's been busy. Oh, a crossbow. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to do any of this micromanaging stuff, but I guess I might as well give my chanter all of my extra weapons. My extra... Ray. I don't have any at the moment, but yeah, we might as well... I think, I think having the plus 4 accuracy, plus 15 damage is worth it compared to whatever the Arquebus has. And the crossbow also has uh, reload time, so it's not wasting the... Um, the I talent I gave him to give him faster reloads. So fine dagger's not that good. What do we got here? Oh, this thing again. Yeah, I don't know. You can you can like keep it and like wear it strategically when you fight against shades and whatever else does freeze damage. But I'm just gonna sell it because I don't want to deal with that. You might you might have noticed a, a kind of a recurring theme with me is I just am lazy. I, I just don't want to deal with stuff. I'd rather just keep on going, keep on playing the game. Well, this wasn't very long. This only took eight minutes to clear out this map. Like I said, not the most exciting map, which is fine. Not every part of the world has to be super exciting. I think we got just about everything there was to get here. Maybe I missed a secret somewhere, whatever. So I guess we'll start Raedrix Hold. I wasn't expecting to actually get there in this video, but we'll start it. Uh, maybe there's like one particular set piece fight that we can get to. I'm not 100% certain of that, so don't quote me on it. I'll try to keep this down to about 30 minutes. So anyway, uh, this is a really cool quest. I like this a lot. I think it's very well done, so bravo, Obsidian. So this guy is a lord, and obviously he's got a castle, and it's very heavily guarded. So you can just wander in through the front gate and kill all the guards, but that would be quite challenging. Now, there's other options for getting in. You can scale the walls, and you can sneak into his castle that way. Although, if, you're, if your whole party isn't good at stealthing, you're going to end up having to fight a whole bunch of guards that way as well. Or you can come down here and sneak up through the sewers. This actually gives you a way directly into the Lord's Chambers and uh, is the fastest way to get to him with the minimum amount of fighting. Now, if you read guides online, what you'll see is people say that you need to... Uh, it's better, actually, to go through the front gate and kill all the guards because that way you get to pick up everybody's weapons and armor and you make a ton of money. We're still going to make a lot of money here, but well, you'd make even more, obviously, if you killed all the guards. It is, of course, a bit morally reprehensible to kill all these poor innocent people who are just defending their lord, and then just... Uh, it also is kind of stupid because once you unseat him, they'll stay there to keep on protecting the castle. So in a real-world sense, it makes sense to keep as much of the infrastructure in place as possible, but, you know, for purely mechanical purposes, yes, you're better off just killing everybody, especially if you're here at the level that my party is at, where it probably isn't actually that big of a deal to fight through all the guards. Anyway, I'm not going to, though. This is an area that a lot of people have trouble with. Uh, I see, I've seen a lot of forums online, like, how do I get through the sewers? 
So in order to get through the sewers here, you either need to have someone with very strong, uh, very high might, or you need to have a pry bar. So this is why it's important whenever you go into t a new town to check the merchants and buy all their grappling hooks, pry bars, and hammer and chisel sets that you can, because because it's it's handy to have that stuff to make it through these scripted interactions. And interestingly, if you don't have someone with a might of 18, um, I think it's 18 that you need. We'll see. Actually, let's bend the bars. Yeah, you don't have I mean, 18 sort of maxed out might. So if you don't have that, then and you, and you don't have a pry bar, you can't get through here. You have to either go through the front door or scale the walls. So now we're gonna go ahead and swim through. And I believe somebody actually got tired. I, this is, I think, athletics. People who don't have a good athletics skill can get tired or have some other bad thing happen to them in these interactions. Let me see who got tired. So, yeah, my uh, wizard and my rogue now have an accuracy penalty and a health penalty, but I'm just going to deal with it. Uh, I could use I'm some of here. these camping supplies, but there will be a place here where we can rest for free. But that's like another little. I like. I like that. It's like a nice little touch to um, make accurate or make make athletics matter. Okay, so there's uh, we're in the sewers here. This place is crawling with undead, and this is the part of the game that will teach you to always be in scouting mode, because there are some. I'll have it in no time. There's there's tons of traps in here. There's a bunch of mode. traps, and it gets very annoying if you just keep running into the traps and taking taking damage for it all the time. Like I talked about before, the traps are very deadly when you walk into them, but extremely weak when uh, you try to use them yourself. You should see um, this. Which is a little bit lacking in verisimilitude, I suppose, but I understand mechanically why that has to be the case. I thought there was another trap up here. Um, maybe not. Okay. I'll probably end up breaking some of these traps with my face anyway, just because... Uh, some of the, but just because my wizard is the, my, the person in my party with mechanics and he's pretty far back. Okay, now this, uh, this ended up being good. So we're blocking the doorway. All these bitches are here and they can't get through, which is exactly what I want. Let's turn on frenzy, then keep fighting. Wizard, shoot a bomb in here. My cleric, my her priest did his thing. We're just shooting fish in a barrel here. This is this this is what I like. This fight could have been very annoying if I had approached them from another place and allowed them to surround my party. Not that I can really take much credit for how that went down because it was totally an accident, but just goes to show that um, in this game, you know how you approach things, how you approach the different fights can be pretty significant to how easy or hard those fights are to take down. All right, let's try to repeat that success here by having my. Fighter stand in the hallway. I believe that he will, that he can block it single-handedly. Um, oh god, everybody's freaking sneaking. Stop sneaking. Okay, so the wizard can shoot a bomb in here. The priest should run up and do that. Uh, I think that should be enough, honestly. Between the barbarians, carnage, and all the people in my party shooting at everybody, not a big deal. Okay, maybe I could have made that a bit faster had I uh, used some more of my abilities and stuff. All right, let's wander around the room. Ah, there's a trap on these sarcophagi. The work of a moment. Ooh, fine, Brigitte. That is some good shit right there. I do believe I'm gonna put that on. He's just wearing a regular old brigandine. This is this thing. This shit's fine. All right, so that's two extra damage resistance for my tank. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is not gonna be my final party composition. I will do some that's variety unusual. as we go along. So eventually, the generic rogue will be replaced by somebody. That sarcophagus wasn't nearly as exciting as the first one. The rogue will be replaced. And I'm going to replace the priest. Priests are great. I just don't like having them in the party. It's not a bad thing about priests. It's not even, like, logically or mechanically optimal. Just because the priest's um, buffs are so useful in some of the fights. But it's just a, you know, personal flavor thing. I just don't feel like using a priest, so I'm not gonna. So he'll be replaced by another frontline fighter. So we'll have two frontline fighters eventually. Uh, one of them will be a paladin. And the barbarian will then have an extra person to hide behind. So my main character will... Uh, be a little bit safer once we get that 
party composition into its final form. Uh, Alright, I see an enemy. There's a black ooze. Where is the black ooze? I'm just not seeing it. Okay, well, we'll find it later. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's in the sewers, and that's where it's gonna stay. Oh, jeez, no! Oh, I triggered the trap. Okay, well... It looks like... It grazed me for 45 pierce damage. I assure you, if, if I used that trap, it would not oh. do uh, 45 pierce damage on a graze. So I was very lucky that was only a graze and not a hit. God knows how much it would have done if it had been a whole Leave hit. Leave it to me! Okay, wait, wait, hang on. Stop scouting, everybody. Graze. Run up a little bit. This thing cannot be prone, blinded, or dazed. So it is immune to, I think, pretty much everything that my team can throw at it. It also likes to do ranged shots against my back line, which is a bit bitchy of it, but I'm actually fine with it. My tank has already taken some I'll damage here, so if I'm not careful, it will actually, uh, or he, <laughs> it, uh, he will actually end up uh, succumbing to chip damage before we get to the final set piece battle of the sewers. All right, so this is the area where you can actually come in from. Uh, oh, God. All right. Get up to the okay. One thing you can do, by the way, in these fights is you can just have Durant's pop his uh, heal area of effect encounter heal because it's teched, it's it's specked out now to give a bonus to accuracy to everybody. So it does pretty significantly in. Ooh, I, I was just about to open that. Uh, it does significantly increase your DP, your party's DPS if you get all six people. Um, you know, boost have if, you, if all six of your people have their accuracy boosted. All right, so this is a pretty decent one. So it gives you a level two wizard spell that you can use three times per rest. This is one of the most famously poorly explained abilities in the entire game. So basically, what this does is it puts an effect on enemies for a base amount of twenty seconds. I don't know if if, if you put it on a character with high intelligence whether that will boost this uh, value higher. And what it does is it makes it so that whenever they're dealt damage. They essentially take burn damage over time, and it's applied to only like a quarter, I think, of their fire resistance. So, um, it's usually not, I think, a good enough spell to use, um, like, as, as a wizard. It, it's better just to, you know, deal damage to them some other way or to disable the enemies, I personally think. But if it's on a ring, might as well. And I'll go ahead and I'll put it, I mean, you can put it on the wizard because he's your normal spellcaster. You can also do something like put it on someone, actually maybe I'll put it on Kana. He has very high intelligence, so let's, I don't know if that'll actually affect it. Uh, it doesn't seem to, but who knows. Uh, he's, he's usually not doing anything, right? Like every now and then he might cast an incantation, but that's only after chanting three phrases. So usually this guy's are sitting there shooting his weapon and not doing much, so maybe he's the one that I can use it on. Although I'm gonna give a disclaimer, there's a really good chance I'm just gonna forget about this. I'll put a hotkey on it, uh, so I've already got a Q for my skeletons. Let's actually put all these hot. Let's put um, a W on for my phantom. I'm probably not going to use the stunning thing. Uh, we'll put this then on an E. Let's see if I can ever add, like. Let's let's just see if like a single time in this playthrough I remember to use that ability. Right, that's just a food box. And going up here, uh, I'm not going to because there's just guards up there who will kill you. And you can actually explore the entire keep and pick up all the treasure boxes and stuff uh, after you take out. Uh, oh my god. Okay, let's pause. Let's see if we can disable this trap. Uh, okay. Alright, now let's go ahead and fight the undead. Blop, blop, blop. Yeah, one revenant is not a concern. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so there's no point going up there and fighting the guards, even if you think, oh, well, I want to get all the loot because... Oh, shit. Mother... Uh, okay. Well, that's annoying. Oh my god, my barbarian is taking some heat here. Let's go for Savage Defiance to heal up. Oh, and get damaged again. Would you guys please stop scouting? Ah, oh, go fight the Black Ooze. Oh, my barbarian's down. And my fighters... Okay, we gotta do some drastic measures. First of all, we're gonna do a heal. Second of all... Oh, I can't knock you prone, because... Shit. This just, I was so distracted by the damn trap that I forgot to uh, care about anything else. Okay, oh my god, okay, let's do it. Let's let's put a phantom in here. W, ooh, wait a minute. 
What's what's the radius on these? Okay, let's let's summon it like in here. Following your lead. There we go. Look at that phantom. Oh, you're still not done killing the ooze. I thought it was dead. Ah, oh, my lord. That looks like it hurt. Yeah, the phantom's actually taking some good damage. This black ooze is shooting at it. Value town. Here I come. Oh, there goes the phantom. Oh my god, he's got three more phrases. Okay, great. Uh. Okay, can you summon it? Yeah, summon it there. Please tell me you're actually gonna do this. Just do it. Thank you. Okay, great. So let's finish off this black ooze. I think there's a good chance that um, I am not attacking with everybody because sometimes your party will get stuck in the doorway. This is one of those things that I find really odd, and I'm surprised Obsidian didn't change, to be honest, because um, normally when you're not in combat, your party members will walk through each other. No problem. Um, but for some reason, in combat, they can't, even if the one that needs to be walked through is standing perfectly still. There was no point going here, there's nothing over here. Did I even get experience for killing those oozes? I didn't, did I? I, I got no experience. There's just nothing. I got some random ingredients and that was it. Okay, great, glad, glad I came down here. Well, not, I, you know, I like that. Not not every room in a dungeon is necessarily going to be good. What did my barbarian... Okay, so minus two dexterity, minus eight burn reduction, not the end of the world. So my fighter's getting hurt, my barbarian has a thing, my uh, rogue and wizard are tired. Oh, the rogue leveled up. Why don't we do that? Okay, so let's keep going for survival. So now he has um, two damage resistance every time we're um, resting in the wild, because once you loop through six, uh, going beyond that increases the value of the previous one. So at six, you can choose from any of these, and then at seven, you know, you get if you, if you pick the damage reduction, it's better. At eight, if you pick the healing multiplier, it's better, etc. I don't know if I'm gonna keep going or not, but we'll stop there for now. And, oh, you know what? Screw it, let's put some points in athletics. So he has second wind and can heal a little bit, and also so that the scripted interactions don't fuck him up as much. All right, so now we got some talents here. Um, I think vicious fighting is just sort of a no-brainer. Basically what this, what this does is he has an ability called dirty fighting, which turns 10% of hits into crits. And what this does is it makes an extra 10% of hits converted into crits, which seems fine. You can also grab the Shadowing Beyond. This one's kind of a fun one. Twice per rest, you can turn invisible, which is nifty. It lets you get away. It'll also activate sneak attack. But we'll just take this to just always do more damage, which seems legit. And then that's that. Okay, so that'll help out here. Okay, so now let's attack. Let's actually unscout. Oh, no, I don't want to unscout because there might still be traps here. Okay, speak of the fucking devil. So let's stop movement you and disable this, this trap. Ugh, oh, I can't disarm it. Okay, I guess, you know, Aloth's mechanics of six are not enough. Is he going to level up anytime soon? Kind of, but okay. So we're just going to have right. to... You've got to be kidding me! Did I say to walk on the trap? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so... Oh, let me take a break. This is one of those things. It's just kind of annoying. For some reason, even after you discover a trap... Uh, your characters will not avoid it. Okay, so we got you. This, this isn't as bad as it looks. Just got some skeletons here. Uh, let's daze them, I guess. And let's... KO them. Okay. That looks like it hurt. Okay. So... I'm... You know what? I'm just gonna move my characters one at a time, because I feel like there's probably a trap there, too. Uh, there's, what is that, another skeleton? They, they, those skeletons look scary, but they're not that big of a deal. So just, I'm just moving everybody up one at a time. And then we control this guy. Just a single skeleton is not really a concern. Okay, so this is an area where you can, if, if, you're, if you suck at mechanics, you can come back later and take care of it. But luckily I do have a mechanist, so we can unlock all these doors. And uh, scout these rooms for hidden objects. Oh, hey, look at that. Ooh, a minor cloak of protection. Not bad. Let's put that on Kana. Maybe then he'll dodge some of these traps every once in a while. And there's also a guy here. This makes it a little bit easier if you rescue him. Than um, later on, uh, there's there's a guy 
who gives you some help and lets you rest. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to him a little bit. He explains what's going on here. There's some necromancer here. And then you can tell him to make a run for it. You can only tell him to make a run for it if you've basically cleared out the area. So that's what I was kind of trying to do is come here last. And it looks like it worked. Margarine's Any secrets in here? In nope. Okay. Places. So now let's take a look at the map here. I'm going to try to explore this whole sewers. How much time has it been? It's been 25 minutes. Okay. So it might be a little bit of a... St oh, God. Let's stop movement. It might be a bit of a stretch to make it to the final... To make, to, the, to make it to the final fight. Luckily, six mechanics is enough to disarm these little traps. Thank goodness. Those are the kind of traps where if you're lucky, you won't even trigger them in the first place. But I am sure they are terrible if you do trigger them. Ooh, camping supplies. Okay, I'm never going to come back here to pick these up. So I'm just going to go ahead and camp right now. Uh, let's go ahead and grab plus two damage reduction. Ooh. Now, actually, actually, what you could do is um, you could say... Oh, hang on. This is interesting. I didn't realize you cannot get a racial accuracy bonus versus kith. Kith are like, you know, people. Elves, dwarves, you know, humans, the Amawa. Those, those are all the Orleans. Those are all kith. But you can't actually get that bonus here. Interesting. So uh, that's what I would do because the, the Lord, obviously, and all of his retinue, they're going to be kith. Um, you could go for damage versus flanked. But no, we'll just take the double... Damage reduction for him, and the same for everybody else. All right, so Edder talks to us. We get some dialogue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we can pick up these camping supplies. Yeah, there's no way in hell I was going to, like, write down that there were camping supplies in the fucking sewers and come back here later. So we'll just go ahead and the work of a use them right now. Okay, that's weird that that was in a locked box, but to each his own, I guess. All right. So, let's go ahead and explore in here. See what there. Okay, so this is what this is actually another way that you could approach this level. You can come up here, and this is another way to get to Lord Raedric's chamber. However, uh, I will take an alternate path, which is m even more direct. I, I like I like that one though. I have played through it before. Basically, what happens is you find some priest robes, and if you all put your priest robes on, then you can essentially pass for priests in the sort of priest area of the keep um but oh seriously are you kidding me kenna why are you such a goddamn idiot get in there oh my god get it oh, fuck me. God, it. everything was perfect ed air was in the doorway move Blocking everybody, and then Kano's like, Hey! I'm a ranged character who doesn't wear any armor. Mind if I get in here? Mind if I get a piece of this? Huh? Huh? Okay. So anyway, what I was saying is that uh, you, can, you get to put robes on and um, pass for priests, but people get suspicious, and you have to pass increasingly more difficult resolve checks in order I'll to uh, not blow your disguise. If, and if you blow your disguise, you have to basically fight everybody, which you can do. You can fight your way through everyone if you want and get more loot that way, but it obviously isn't super uh, stealthy. So um, I'm not going to do that because my main character has no resolve. It's, it's a tricky thing because resolve in this game is the most commonly checked stat in conversations, but... Um, it, uh, is only good for tanks, and I don't think that tank characters are very good in this game, because you're better off just being able to do some damage, and even if you are a tank, monsters will just break engagement and go after, uh, your squishy back row if you don't do enough damage. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. So there's an Animancer here, uh, which we will actually talk to at first, and then we'll kill. And that'll be in the next video. So in the next video, we're actually, I think, going to be able to kill her and have the climactic fight against the evil lord of Gilded Vale. I'll see you guys again soon.